Hello and welcome to the News Minute. Uh, the Tamil Nadu government has tabled uh, Justice Aruna Jagdishan's committee report uh, in the assembly. And it's a damning report which indicts uh, several senior police officers who are responsible for uh, the Tutukurin firing. And joining me today is uh, People's Watch Executive Director Henry Tipain, who is also a human rights defender. Right now he is in Brussels, but uh, uh, he is uh, accepted to do this live. Uh, uh, and uh, sir, uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, joining this uh, live. Uh, I want to ask you that the full report is now in public. You must have read this report. So what are your initial thoughts on this report? Well, um, Sameer, thanks for having me. Uh, it is ironical that I am out of the country when such a wonderful report has come. For uh, people like us who were on the field on the 2nd of May 2018 and then subsequently followed it up with very intense teams of fact-finding which undertook um, inquiries with families, came out with a public inquest with 23 uh, jury members, one of whom incidentally happens to be Mr. Sri Kumar himself, who recently has been out of detention. A report of this sort is um, extraordinarily good for us. I think the human rights community would be grateful to uh, Justice Aruna Jagadishan for the work she has put in. I, in particular, would like to thank her. I would in particular always have apologized to her for the public posturing that I did for the delay that was there in four years of this report coming out. But that was as a citizen of this country, as a human rights defender. And today I want to thank her through your channel, particularly for the work that she has done. But her work is significant for one reason, which judges who adorn this position should understand. Justice Arna Jagadishan did not start her job in the circuit house of Tutupuri. She did not start her job in the office on Green Bay's Road. She started her job visiting every one of the 16 families who have been killed in this police firing. I go on holding on to our 16 number, although the report still says 13. Visiting the families of those who were grievously injured, 40 of them, and those who with simple injuries now numbered at 64, visiting their houses, doing what a human rights defender would have done was what Justice Arna Jagadishan did. And therefore, as a member of the human rights defender community, I need on all our behalf to thank her for what they did. And therefore, the report, Shabir, for me, is what the people of Tutukudi spoke to her. Hmm. And what the people of Tutukudi spoke to her in confidence. In the confines of their homes, built up confidence, uh, built up confidence and then had the courage to come up and speak to her in the circuit house, deposing what had taken place. I myself have spent a whole day before the commission. And I can be very frank, I don't praise judges just like that. I was cross-examined for very many hours. But I can tell you, there were many questions that she asked, which questions only showed me how detailed information she had, not written somewhere, to be replicated, but in her mind. And therefore, the report is not for me a Justice Aruna Jagadishan report alone. And I wish the Chief Minister also understands this. This is a report of the people of Tutukudi, of the ordinary people of Tutukudi, who, in spite of all other commissions of inquiry deceiving them, not being honest, judges after retirement, here, they placed trust in her and she has replaced that, I mean, re, um, replayed that trust through her report. For me, this is a report of the people of Tutukudi. And I also, think, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. So also, uh, there were two investigations. On the other hand, there was a CBI investigation that was carried out uh, in this uh, Tutukurin uh, firing. But the CBI had dealt this matter just like a law and order issue. Because here we are talking about people losing their lives, unarmed civilians, 
losing their lives because they were protesting for something. And how do you see this, uh, the CBI findings and Aruna Jagdishan Commission's findings? Now, the CBI was mandated by the Madurai bench of the Madras High Court through their order of 18th August 2018, if I'm right. And it was to be completed in a few months. Extensions after extensions were sought. All that they did was file one charge sheet against 101 people with the, you know, in two different uh, supplementary charge sheets. That apart, after, after a lot of difficulty, we have, we have now uh, unearthed that they also filed a charge sheet against one police officer. Yeah, only one inspector. One inspector, Mr. Lawrence, who now is a DSP in Ramnadapur. Hmm. And that Lawrence has been the, the, the sacrificial lamb of the ADMK government, taking the entire blame for what all the other officers and the chief minister perhaps of that day also directed. And so I will come back to the CBI a little later. This is a sh shameful investigation of the CBI. CBI should put their heads down in shame. We gave our report of 2,500 pages to Justice Arna Jagadish. We did it the same day to the DSP, whose name I don't need to reveal, in Tutukudi, who was investigating. After four years, Justice Jagannath, um, Aruna Jagadishan comes out with her report. After four years, they indict one, sub, one inspector who is now a DSP. Gross injustice by the CBI through their investigation. I can understand one accused being escaping, but if your entire investigation is so bad, there is something wrong with the CBI, is what I say very respectfully. I don't, I don't, uh, I am under a CBI investigation. So saying this is, is, is uh, my, my public duty and therefore I say it, not every CBI officer reflects this character, but this is something very, very shameful on the CBI. Also, I want to talk a little about uh, the contents of the report. Uh, Arna Jagdishan uh, Commission report uh, says that how there was no follow-up action. There was no action on part of the district administration to ensure that there is a dialogue between the protesters. And that was a problem. And that led to a lot of, uh, you know, mistrust. And that led to a lot of uh, uh, rumor mongering. And it also allowed, uh, uh, you know, some amount of uh, uh, confusion in the entire process because they wanted to hold a peaceful protest but the mistress that they had towards the district administration is something which, uh, which was, which was uh, the basis of uh, this entire, you know, law and order trouble. Well, um, this starts with a peace meeting. Hmm. And uh, how is it that, uh, uh, that the, uh, a peace meeting is called, the SP is present, and the collector has the audacity to send a sub-collector to attend that meeting. I start from there. Um, it is important to point that out in particular. This is what our report also pointed out. How is it that the collector never took responsibility to even come for a peace meeting? Forget what peace, for what purpose, etc. You hide behind something and refuse to be there and depute a sub-collector to, 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 to lead the proceedings and caused confusion. And that confusion continued for a long, many months in Tutukuri. You labeled people. You labeled people who came from outside to give solidarity as all sorts of, as in all sorts of names and said, these are patriots, these are non-patriots, etc. And I want to use the most decent term uh, at this point of time and therefore I'm using these terms. This is what the district administration's tactic then was. So it's not confusion. This was conspiracy by the district administration to lead to what was in store, which unfortunately nobody knew what was in store. A 144 in, in Tutukorin, in parts of Tutukorin police station, you have seen the struggle for 100 days. You have seen the struggle in February, in March, where thousands and thousands of people came together on the street. The peaceful nature and still your 144 is only in selected police stations of Tutukurin. Somebody is crazy somewhere. And if, 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 if you, we had 
if we had uh, mr mg devasagayam here he would he would have enough words sufficient words to 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 pull up the district collector for his 144 order so the 144 order was a secret document believe me it was a secret document which was revealed for the first time only before the madurai bench of the madras high court hmm. in a in a petition that was filed by the then bar association president of tutugudi because they refused to make this public so you have a 144 order which is a secret official secret act covered document you don't inform people you don't dialogue with protesters at any point of time this is the result and the shameful I mean, shamir is is not only that so therefore persons can march from one part of the city which is not covered by 144 and they enter another part of the city which is covered by 144 so Where it, it was like laying a trap it was it was like it was people walking into a trap they were actually invited into a trap that is exactly what happened they were invited into a trap and at the entrance of the trap of course there was some slight efforts made to and i physically saw it i was visibly there uh, to 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 stop the people from coming but the incoming mothers with children uh, was such a big size and of course there were youth who were pushing themselves through uh, the police gave up because the barricades were simple barricades the barricades were never meant to stop people the okay. same barricades were there at the entrance of the collectorate because they wanted to trap people inside the inside the the collectorate and the rest is there in the report for people to know from where the attackers came the attackers did not come from outside the attackers came from within the collectorate and that is her finding and i think that is important for well well that that is an important finding that uh, i want to talk about uh, uh, the report clearly says that the shoot the firing was unprovoked and 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 there were like uh, you know sharp shooters uh, who were uh, placed inside uh, the collectorate uh, who indiscriminately opened fire at least 17 rounds in fact uh, she also names uh, a few policemen who did this and in fact uh, you know she uses this word that uh, uh, you know one ace shooter was responsible for multiple episodes of firing on the same day he was first there at the collector's office then he you know accompanies the sp of tutukuren and uh, he goes to tereshpuram and other areas and then indulges in opening fire by uh, using a slr so uh, you know how do you see uh, the, uh, the 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 conduct of uh, police personnel because it has been it, it's there in black and white that there is no escape now this is this is this is where i'm Uh, where I need to be very frank with you, uh, I heard the Honorable Chief Minister a few minutes okay. ago of the statement he made on the floor of the Assembly in response to the members uh, who spoke on the floor of the Assembly. Um, he has narrated everything, which I don't need to repeat. But then, in his action plan, hmm. um, I want to say this comes five months after the report, which is for me um, not an encouraging stand at all. 2019. Uh, the ruling party faced elections for the member of parliament there and honorable um, kanimani got elected and the promises that were made at the time of election are known in 1921 they stood for elections they won they have two ministers from tutukudi their moral responsibility to the people of tamil nadu and in particular to the people of tutukudi is very very high i'm not talking about political responsibility the moral responsibility and in that moral responsibility what was heard today was although 50 lakhs is recommended 5 lakhs more would be given we are not here to bargain we are not here to beg this is what the commission has said when everything else the commission has said is accepted by you 5 lakhs more doesn't make a change i would like the honorable chief minister to review that assurance that has been made on the floor of the assembly as well as that the that the, the people who are injured Um, that they should also be given the compensation that has been recommended, which is 10 lakhs. Now, moving away from 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 recommendations on compensation, what has been announced, and I want to first appreciate that uh, disciplinary action would be taken against all the series of officers. I don't need to name them; they are on which you finished. I said it right from the collector to the deputy tasildas to the to the uh, um, DSP to the sub inspector uh, to the fire. Uh, three inspectors to the one sub inspector seven constables etc fine 
disciplinary action is contemplated. Four of them have also been placed under suspension. There yes. is departmental action. That's what one inspector is. and four constables. Yeah, right. that's not enough. That is not what was promised to us. We are here to fight impunity, hmm. and impunity is fought not by disciplinary action. This is the criminal conspiracy that has been entered into by the connector at the instructions of political bosses, right up to the IG, DIG, SP, and all the rung of policemen, and the atrocious act that, and we had it, we had it demonstrated that the deputy Tassildar was supposed to be in this part of the city, was actually in that part of the city, etc., is known to people. We had a map showing these things. Now, all that is a criminal act. Killing of 13 people is a criminal act. Where is your criminal prosecution in this is what I asked the Honorable Chief Minister with great respect. This is what was assured to us, not compensation. This is what was, they will be punished, is what he said earlier. Is this punishment? Suspend the collector. Suspend the IG. Suspend the DIG. If police officers of that rank can conspire with a ruling government, then the independence of our police force is at stake. And that is dangerous for any government. And that is dangerous for the Honorable Chief Minister's government as well. They can turn the same. The, and the Chief Minister also on the floor of the House promised that Tower uh, Say the Vargal, I'm saying it in Tamil, Tower Say the Vargal, Gundri Yetra Padu Vargal. They will be brought to the box and they will this be action the against them. This is not the box. The box is elsewhere. And therefore, that has to be challenged. The members of the Alliance parties, the DMK party themselves, the Honorable Member of Parliament of Tutukuri, the ministers from Tutukuri, you have to act now and say this is not enough. You have to ensure that in that sole case that the CBA has filed, and I'm very wanting to be legally right, I don't want to talk like an MLA on the floor of the assembly. I have to be responsible. There is a, an FA, a, a, there is a final report filed by the CBI. CBI was the investigating agency investigating this case. And therefore, it is that CBI which has to be challenged through a 173.8 Clause 8 petition before the CJM Madurai, where that final report is there. And the state has to come forward and say, we have now got this volume of four volumes of information. Therefore, a, a further investigation, timely investigation has to be undertaken by the CBI. Okay. This is also to be done by the CPM party. The CPM party's Tutukorin secretary was the complainant in that case. Yeah, he is a de facto complainant in this case. Yes. So I, 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 I was just coming to that. So what is the procedure? What is the way forward? Because the government says that they are seeking legal opinion and in fact they have sought legal opinion and they have gone in for a departmental action but if you have to initiate criminal action against uh, top ranking police officers then that is something that uh, uh, you know i see that there will be some kind of lacking because you and i know that it's not so easy when there is already an investigation that is going on that is the uh, cbi investigation and uh, they have also filed a charge sheet uh, so uh, there so are, only one agency can inquire into this matter, right? So, so what, what, what can be done now? On that principle that one agency has already investigated the matter, what the government can do and CPM party can do is to file a report before the court, uh, file a petition before the court, hmm. asking for further investigation under Section 173.8 of the Criminal Procedure Court. And on that basis, the CBA is asked to investigate. So it's now, not a fresh investigation. It's no, a the, same, investigation. the same investigation, but on fresh evidence that has been provided by Justice Arna Jagadish. That is evidence. Based on that evidence, you can carry on your investigation. And within a time frame. Don't try your four-year status here. Within a time frame. Now, supposing the CBI comes forward and says, sorry, our job is done. Then the, uh, the state government has to go to the Madurai bench of the Madras High Court, which entrusted this investigation to the CBI and say, CBI is not willing. We are willing to constitute a special investigation team to take over from the CBI. 
and I am not saying CBCID. I don't trust the CBCID in matters where you have high-ranking officers of the rank of IGs involved and collectors involved. Bring a special investigation team headed by the topmost person that you want of incredible uh, character to be able to lead the investigation. I think that is what needs to be done. This, the Advocate General of our, the, the most uh, honorable Advocate General of our state knows very well. Hmm. The public prosecutor of our state knows very well. No, we it happened in uh, it happened in Ramajayam's case. The CBI, the matter went to the CBI. The CBI investigated it. Later, the CBI was unable to investigate, and now once again the matter is with the Tamil Nadu police. There, the CBI gave up. Yeah, I am saying that the CBI give up. You put this entire pressure on the CBI and make them give up, and simultaneously say we are willing and go to go to the Madurai bench and get a direction. All this is possible. That is how. I will place the accused in the dock. The statement by Honorable Chief Minister will become a reality. And that has to be a reality. Impunity has to be fought. Not through departmental proceedings. These departmental proceedings, I can tell you stories about departmental proceedings. Um, a collector who had the audacity to go to a, a Jamabandi on that date, you think another collector who is going to do the disciplinary proceedings is going to punish him? No chance. So this is, these are not dramas that we can watch. We want prosecution. We want immediate prosecution. We want quality prosecution. We want, therefore, all that to be preluded by a good quality investigation, drawing from Justice Arna Jagadishan. Justice Arna Jagadishan took a long time, but has done quality work. And if her work should not be wasted in, in history for human rights violations of, of, of human rights in Tamil Nadu, that needs to be followed by prosecution. Right, Mr. Henry Tiffin, thank you so much for talking to us and sharing your thoughts on uh, Justice Arna Commission, Arna Jagdishan Commission report and its findings. Uh, in fact, uh, like you said, we will have to wait and see whether uh, uh, the Tamil Nadu government is going to go for, uh, is going to file a petition and uh, it's going to go for further investigation in this case because uh, departmental action, like you said, departmental action is not punishment. Punishment is criminal action, and that is something that uh, M.K. Stalin had promised to the people of Tutukurin, and I hope uh, he sticks to that promise. In fact, in the, on the floor of the house, he made uh, that commitment even today as well. So we will have to wait and see what the state government is going to do. Thank you so much for uh, talking thank to you, us. Thank you, thank you. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you. Thank you, Shabir.